Welcome again to the course on other signal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about applications. We're talking about how to use the models we have been studying uh, throughout the course uh, for the application of sound transformation. So we aim at manipulating uh, sounds and changing different aspects of it. In the first uh, demonstration class, uh, we exemplified the idea of morphing using the short time Fourier transform. In the last class, uh, we talked about time scaling, how to change the duration of the sound using the sinusoidal model. And in this uh, class, I want to talk about pitch changes, how to change the frequencies of a sound, and we will use the harmonic plus stochastic uh, model. So we'll be basically changing pitch-related uh, information of harmonic sounds. In order to use the harmonic model, we need to uh, understand a little bit the sound. So for example, if we start with this uh, um, saxophone uh, sound, let's listen to this. Okay, in order to define the, the especially the window size, we need to know uh, the ranges of fundamental frequencies uh, that are present here. So a good uh, way to do that is to uh, look at the spectrogram of, uh, of the sound and basically uh, zoom in to the first harmonic so that we see the, basically the fundamental frequency which is the first uh, line of this uh, harmonic series and kind of see which is the lowest and highest values uh, in here. So uh, it's better to use a bigger window size so we see a more refined uh, line. And with this, okay, we have a pretty good uh, view of this line. And clearly the lowest uh, sound would be this note here, more or less. Uh, so that's around, if we see, uh, let's say around 450 hertz. Uh, and then the highest, is this uh, note here which is around 600 and something hertz okay so this is uh, good information for uh, now defining the parameters of the harmonic uh, harmonic plus stochastic model so let's go to the the sms tools uh, models ui and let's go directly to the harmonic plus stochastic model and we will open this uh, same file which is this uh, sax phrase the short version of it Okay, now we have to choose the parameters. Uh, so uh, the window uh, Blackman is a good choice because it has a good uh, uh, low level uh, side lobes. Uh, now in order to decide the window size, well, it's good to basically go to a terminal and uh, from IPython we can just uh, quickly do calculations. So for example, we can just say, okay, the Blackman window has uh, six beans in the main lobe, we multiply by 44,100 and we said that uh, the lowest frequency was around 400 and something hertz so let's in order to be safe let's say okay 400 hertz so 400 and this is the a window size that is appropriate for a frequency of 400 the lowest which is the, the, the meaningful one because it's the, the longest window that we will need Okay, so we will put as window size, let's say, 661, an odd size. FFT size, well, let's make a, a big one, so we have zero padding, let's uh, 2048. Uh, the threshold, it really doesn't need to be that low, but, uh, but let's leave it, so we, we have a, a lot of harmonics uh, there. The minimum duration of uh, sinusoidal tracks, 0.1, that's fine maximum number of harmonic the maximum number of harmonics that there will be will be 44,100 divided by 400 okay that would be if it had all the harmonics so it's 110 but of course this is the lowest frequency and this is really uh, uh, if we would have harmonics all the way through so 100 would be fine then we need to define the range of the fundamental frequency so we can put the one we said it was around 400 and the other was around 600 and something, so to be safe, let's say uh, 650. Okay, this is a narrow threshold to identify the fundamental frequency. Maybe let's I'll be a little more flexible, let's put seven. And uh, this uh, deviation, 
um, that's fine like this. And the stochastic approximation for the residual, um, we don't need to be too too smooth. We don't need uh, to do data compression. So if let's say if we have 0.4, that should be okay. Okay, let's uh, compute it now. Okay, so this is the result. Uh, we have the original signal, the analyze, the harmonics plus the stochastic, and the synthesize. Let's listen to the different components of it, uh, the sinusoidal component. It clearly captures most of the sound. Then let's uh, listen to the stochastic. Well, it's very soft, but it's, it's there, so it's a, it's a relevant component, and of course the sum of the two. Okay, so this is a good starting point to now run the transformation. So let's go to, uh, let's quit this. Let's try to remember these parameters. And now we will go to the other directory where we have the transformations uh, interface. And let's type Python and the transformation GUI. Okay, so this is the GUI for the transformations. And let's go directly to the HPS um, model with the transformations and well it's already by default uh, the sax phrase is here so let's use uh, the parameters that we use if I remember it was 661 we did FFT of 2048 the threshold was minus 100 minimum sign duration was that a number of harmonics 100 this minimum was frequency we said 400 and maximum was uh, 650 F0 detection, uh, the F0 error uh, threshold was uh, uh, 7 and uh, the stochastic factor we put uh, 0.4 Okay, now we can analyze and this uh, would definitely do uh, the same thing that we did before so we can check that the analysis is correct that's exactly the same sound that we heard before. So now we can start playing around with the transformations. And we have uh, two um, possibilities for changing the frequencies and one for changing the time. So for the time, we're not interested in changing the time. So let's say the time as 0, 0, 1, 1. So that means that it's not changing anything. Okay, now in frequency scaling, we have two frequency transformations. Uh, given that uh, we are in a harmonic sound, we know where the harmonics are, and that's a great advantage compared with the sinusoidal model. So, in fact, these type of changes could be done with the sinusoidal model, but of course, then we are restricted to some transformations. And, uh, for example, the frequency stretching is not possible with the sinusoidal model because we don't know which sinusoid corresponds to the, which harmonic. Okay, let's just first maybe, let's just use the scaling first. So let's have here again uh, without any uh, transformation. So if we put 0, 1, 1, 1, that means that there is a frequency stretching of 1, so it means no stretching at, at the beginning and at the end. And then, okay, in the frequency scaling, well, let's start with by downloading or uh, sort of uh, decreasing the pitch of this sound, for example, 0.8 and uh, so it's at time 0 we will have 0.8 and at time 1 we'll have also 0.8 okay and a very uh, important uh, parameter is this timbre preservation this timbre preservation what it does it tries to preserve the shape of the spectrum of the harmonics if we put one it preserves the, har uh, the harmonic uh, shape so it should sound more natural than if we put zero, in which zero we just transpose everything, and so the magnitudes will uh, be affected. So let's apply it like this. Okay, so we have uh, clearly um, transposed the harmonics uh, down, so now they are uh, closer together. So let's listen to the result. So it sounds quite natural, even though we have transpose, uh, mainly because of this timbre preservation, we have maintained quite a bit uh, this, uh, this quality of the saxophone. And then uh, just to finish, uh, let's uh, make some uh, 
frequency stretching. So frequency stretching is a is a kind of a, to convert the sound into an inharmonic type of spectrum in which we are uh, adding an exponential factor to the harmonic value. Let's say so if we have uh, at zero uh, time zero one. Let's say let's start with uh, one, and then at the end let's stretch everything to let's say one point, let's say one. Okay, so we will have a stretching factor at the end and not at the beginning. So progressively, the stretching will increase. Let's see what that does. Okay, so we see clearly here that the fundamental has remained the same, and the harmonics. Well, we still have maintained. The, the scaling factor, so we are scaling everything down to 0.8, but the harmonics kept, keep uh, getting apart from each other more and more as, uh, as the time goes on. And clearly at the end, they are not equally spaced, so that's an inharmonic spectrum. Let's listen to that. Okay, so clearly the, the low frequency is the same, but as, as time progresses, the, the sound sounds more inharmonic, kind of more metallic, because the, the harmonics have been stretched. Of course, we can do a lot of things, uh, so feel free to play around with these parameters, and of course with time scaling. Uh, time scaling is also very powerful once we have been able to analyze a sound with the harmonic plus a stochastic uh, model. That's all I wanted to say. Um, so basically, uh, we have uh, talked about um, the idea of changing the pitch or the frequencies of a sound. Uh, first, we use Sonic Visualizer to, uh, to understand the sound, and then we use the SMS Tools GUI with the Harmonic Plus Stochastic Model to uh, change uh, the pitch or the frequencies of a sound. Um, so we have been talking about pitch change. Of course, uh, pitch change can be done with the sinusoidal model, can be done with the harmonic plus uh, stochastic or the sinusoidal plus stochastic, or with quite a few of the models we have been talking about. And in Audacity also, there is uh, some implementations for that. So anyway, so we just presented a little bit of that, an example using uh, the harmonic plus stochastic and uh, the potential for this type of transformations. So I hope uh, you got an idea of that. And now we'll have still another uh, demonstration class in we'll be uh, talking about the harmonic plus stochastic model, but in another uh, type of possibility of transforming sounds, which will be uh, of morphing two sounds, interpolating the two representations of two sounds. So I hope to see you all next class. Bye-bye.